Hello and welcome to the Ramon Foster Show, brought to you by the Get-Go Cafe and Market, where they're serving hot, fresh food, Mo. Not those, like, rotisserie hot dogs and whatever, but good, good stuff, you know, made by somebody back there making stuff. I always question those rolling hot dog machines. Like, who's actually snatching one off there? Oh, come on. You've had them. I haven't had one of those. I have not, but I have caught a corner vendor hot dog. I will say that. I'm I'm not too proud to say that. Yeah, I I had to pull off a rotisserie hot dog the other night in Denver because the only thing that was open was a convenience store downtown as I was walking back to the baseball stadium. I got to tell you, it wasn't bad. That's the thing. I've heard people just trash like the New York corner dogs and stuff. And I'm like, no, no, no. Eat them. It wasn't bad to me. Yeah, but it's just, just it was okay. You know, I made it. You know, yeah. but, but, but Gecko does get a lot that. better than that. There Gecko we go. Like, there, there, there. We got we got a point to all this. Moan, you know the the Hey Moan segment yesterday, uh, in in which uh, I handed the headset to a young man named Dior who came in yeah. with a bunch of his buddies. I got to tell you. Uh, he brought up so many good points he that did. we kept talking about it after the show, and then we promised ourselves afterward that we were going to bring up one of them for a full segment here, and yeah. that was that was the one about the uh, the number of wins and the and yeah. the, the, the uh, if there's a losing season, what would Pittsburgh's reaction be? And you wanted to have at that today, I do, man, because that that young that young man, man, and his friends, they are Pittsburgh just as much as anybody else is, and you got to think, you know, he asked, I asked him, I was like, who's your quarterback all these years? He's like, man, the year Ben was drafted was the year I was born. That's all he's ever known as Ben Roethlisberger. He said that. And I think when everybody questions this next transition for the Steelers, it's based on the fact of we don't know what the quarterback is going to look like, man. But not just that. Wins and losses. That is a city, man. And you heard it from one of your youth inside of the city that worries like, what are we going to look like? What are we going to do? And I think, DK, that is a fair question. That was a fair point to be brought up to. And and honestly, that's the beauty of what we're doing here, too, man, is the idea that that Hey Moan session segment is based on the fact that, look, you can walk in and ask those questions and, and, and get them answered and really, really challenge us if we're being real. Right, DK? I mean, it doesn't get any more real than, you know, we. one of the things that happens on my side of the fence in this business, meaning the media industry, is that we sometimes will go too far and say we're, that we're speaking for the people or we're not. Uh-huh. We're not. We're not. Yeah. Okay. And, and I always try to avoid that. When, even when somebody says something nice to me like, hey, DK, like you're our voice or whatever. No, I'm actually not. I'm not. Yeah. I'm just one person. I don't speak for anybody, even in my own family. I'm just yeah. me. Okay. <laughs> so when someone comes in. Yeah. And says to us, hey, this is this is what the people are thinking right now. Well, this is actually the people. OK. You know? Yeah. So what it actually would be the reaction, Moan, it, it, if there was a losing season in Pittsburgh? So, Go ahead and say it, because I know the, what the answer is. I know it, what people would do here, I think. So let's let's go back to 92. The Pittsburgh Steelers have had three losing seasons since 1992. That, that is was insane. That is insane. So, Insane. There's so there's a lot around it. You got to ask yourself too. This man, like the the, the saving grace of being not, or the grace of being not being being there right now, that matters a little bit. But if they have a below five hundred season this year, like where is Coach Tomlin? Where is your grace to him? Where is your hey man? This is the first one. We're not used to this, or is it just doom and gloom if you have a losing season like that? And I don't think that's a fair point to be to be at as a fan. I know the expectation. I feel like this team is an above 500 team, whether whether DK that is that is nine and and eight or or whatever the case may be. They are above 500 team. And I kind of relate that a little bit to DR. Like I I know this defense. I know that skill that's on that team offensively, aside from uh, the quarterback situation. That's the biggest question behind it all. And that's what I had to kind of tell him. He went on to kind of say, you know, he he sees or hopes that he has Joe Burrow types of, of of a year. If we get that from any one of those freaking quarterbacks this year, hey, I'd love to hear that Pittsburgh's going to the Super Bowl. Like, oh, no. It, 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 it is no. going to be stuck in our heads now. <laughs> it, <laughs> is. it is. But imagine getting that quarterback play. Imagine that defense not stepping back like they were damn good last year. Now imagine Najee in a different year. Imagine Pat in a better year. Imagine Chase Claypool with more of an urgency in Deontay. Like, it could add up. I can do that. But Dior kind of, his stress 
was based on the guy that was drafted the year he was born. And I know this for a fact. That's all of us right now that's when it comes everybody, to this season. That is what this Vegas odds makers yeah. having the team at 7.5 right now is all about. Did you hear, by the way, about the guy uh, somewhere who put down the biggest over-under bet yet? Uh-huh. Uh Put fifteen thousand dollars on the over that the Steelers will go over seven point five. Now, this is the kind of thing that ends up moving the odds. Okay, <laughs> this yeah. is when the people in Vegas go, "Whoa, Ooh, hang on a second, what's happening yeah. here?" But, but and and he it's, I guarantee you, it's going to move. I guarantee you, it's going to move before. Before the the kickoff at Paul Brown Stadium, yeah. If, if you're a betting man, I'd say get in on it. You know, like I I do think since he's pretty strong. If I'm being real, they're probably right now, aside from the head coach and some of the parts, just on field, probably one of the more stable teams. I know they went and signed a bunch of guys offensively. They got to get their safety taken care of. But as far as skill, as far as what they've done last year, and just the common aspect of their of their quarterback, I think they feel probably okay. This is ours to lose. And that pains me to actually say something like that. But the one entity that we have had for years, again, I, I want to keep dropping his name because shout out to Dior for actually putting us in this space to talk about, you know, can we get a winning season this year? I know the fans are going to be there. I know the, the the love of the Steelers is going to be there too. But all of that is based on the fact of the performance of the team. They want to see us win always. Again, I told you we got friggin' just railed on the sideline when the offensive line was having a bad day. And that's because that's the passion of the city. Again, we, we dropped this, uh, you know, a little bit yesterday, like that city of Pittsburgh and its fans, even outside of the city. I put the city as the main focal point because whenever a Stiller fan go into the city lines of Pittsburgh, you realize this is different. It's a city that thrives, but it's a city that also has the the bloodline of winning, of the Steelers, of the Penguins. You know what I'm saying? Of the Pirates. It matters. So hearing him yesterday kind of drop his head and ask that question, it brings a sense of like, (laughs) I don't know if we were ready for that real question, DK. I I think that you're going to see... If the Steelers get off to a rough start, not to be that guy, but that's yeah. possible with with Bengals, Patriots, and the the away night game in Cleveland. Yeah, there's a possibility for it. We're gonna see who sticks with it. Yeah, yeah I think you're gonna see fans. A lot of, you mean? Yeah, I think you're gonna see a lot of people jump off the train early if that if that were to go badly. Even though the Jets are next, you know, and you get yourself a nice little W in in Week Four, um, it, it's. It, it's going to be interesting. Let's put it that way. I think we're in somewhat of unknown territory and largely because of what you and Dior both said, which is, you know, no Ben. You okay. So know. R- real quick, know. evaluation of the head man. Does that get hot? Yes. You know? Wow. Yes. Wow. It does. Wow. It does. Because it's going to, you know what, you know what the, the meme is going to well, be? I already know it before you even say it. Go right ahead. You don't have Ben. That's it. You did all this writing, Ben. Uh, or or Colbert, that's another one. Or you Colbert, did, or you you did all of this and, riding oh. those guys. It's just like the how he won the Super Bowl with Cowers players. <laughs> Coming back, we'll discuss more of the job of Coach Tomlin. Yes, oh, we will. Oh, yes, we will. And welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. Moan, you got something on your mind. I can tell when you when you hijack the outro and you go, this is what we're talking about in the next yeah. segment. You got something to say. Let's hear it. Yeah, man. Just b- because I asked you at the end of that, that, that segment we had, DK, well, does the seat get hotter for the man up top? And that means Coach Tomlin. You know, and, and a lot of people are going to push that narrative. A lot of people are going to want to know, you know, oh, can you do this again? And, of course, I think that me personally, this is a big adjustment for everybody. Cobra's not there. Ben's not there. You lose a Hall of Fame center the year before that, and now you got all this turnover on the team. So after one year missing that and not having a losing season, and I know a lot of people, stop using it. You hadn't had a losing season excuse. Yeah. It's not but an excuse. It, it's true. It's just a fact. It's all it is. <laughs> it's true. You Man. know, we, we went through it earlier. Like, uh, Cowers had three losing seasons and still got crazy. You know, and I know a lot of people say, well, he had a, what was it, six and 10 season, but we got Ben. Well, that's true. But let's not act like it was, it was, you know, just 
happy go lucky and we living in Pleasantville the entire time. Like the flow, the ebb and flows of seasons, it's it happens. We were speaking a little bit off air, a little bit of uh, what I uh, producer Eddie, you know, he said he had a conversation with his pops about it. He's like, are they still a top five team in the NFL? Is Coach Tomlin a top five coach in the NFL? And I think both those answers are yes. Because if I was to ask you, well, what if, what if okay, the biggest uh, teams in the NFL have done, the, 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 the cornerstones? Let's name a few real quick, DK. Giants. Huh? Not much there. Washington. Not much there. Dallas. Chicago. Not, not much. Yeah. Chicago. There's the, you know, when you're talking about, well, look, there's coaches. a lot of different criteria that you can ask. Uh, to, to, to analyze in something like this, but when you're when you're as I see it in this century, once you got from 2000 onward, there are two NFL franchises, okay, and that yeah. would be New England number one and yep. comfortably so, and then Pittsburgh, and that goes by playoff success, regular season success, um, Hall of Famers, star players yeah. produced, um, and you know. When you start getting into who's the the popular this and that yeah. or whatever, unfortunately, that's when you have to throw the Cowboys into it just because <laughs> that's just how that goes in Dallas. Uh, but when you're talking about achievements over the course of this century, yeah. all 22 years of it so far, you're talking about the Patriots and then the Steelers. Yes. And, and let's let's speak about the teams that's, that's won quickly. Like, OK, Tampa won because of Tom. And I got to give B.A. a whole yeah, lot of I, credit, I give, too. That, that goes in the New England category. Okay, well, I'm well, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, but that, 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 it goes into the uh, – that goes in the conversation of Tom, and they built a monster team. Like, okay, let's talk about Kansas City. Kansas City has Pat, and they've only got one. They went to one and lost one. one. Mm-hmm. Okay? They went to one and lost one. So now we got to see what, what uh, Coach Reed does moving forward. And then let's go to another team that we respect that's not America's team, in a sense, but have a whole lot of history. Let's look at San Francisco. They've gone through coaches. Heck, they're on like the third or fourth quarterback right now. Yes, they've been in the playoffs, but so has Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, say what you want to, and nobody's going to bring this up, but it's the idea of the guys that he's had. Okay, making the playoffs in 2020, like, let's be real here. That in itself was an achievement with how Ben was just the year before that, too. In 2021, there was another one. So you got to say to yourself, for a head coach that's kind of proving himself to weather the storms when Ben was out, whether the storm while Ben was in, even if he was at his healthiest or not, managing hell, the teams that we had, and we've spoken about those guys before. I ask you again, like, where is there a little bit of a longer leash? I feel, well, I'll say this too. I feel like the Roonies and their ownership, the management of them, I don't think they feel the same way as the fan base does when it comes to Coach Tomlin too. I'll say that meaning. No. He yeah, probably that- has more stock then we'll yeah. actually give him credit for. There's no leash. Every people ask me about a leash. How long is his <laughs> leash? There's no leash. With, He's been with at this ownership. Long time. However, however. Okay. However. He's got to win a playoff game. I'll that has to that. stop. Okay. Yeah. You got to get into the playoffs and it's not okay. I mean, look, I, I like you said I I, I'm with you on 2021. When you're talking about, you know, going 9-7 and 1 against the odds, seven yeah. of those wins were on fourth quarter comebacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, the offensive line was a wreck, and Ben was playing with a lot of rookies and still yeah. got it done in the fourth quarter. But, but all of us accepted. Yeah. And let's not lie about this. All yeah. of us accepted the moment that team went into Kansas City. Not only that the Steelers were going to lose, but yeah. that they were going to get destroyed, and they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah, and that script has to change and that is on the head coach i feel that's a fair thing to bring up here dk that's about as fair as you can get man there is no getting around that the winning in the playoffs has to pick up i will agree with 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 you on that um it's so many different avenues we can go down but you're right yeah 100 percent wins have to have to grow in the playoffs where it matters 100 mm-hmm. percent. when we come back the only segment that matters no. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. Time for the only segment that matters. That's the Hey Moan segment. Today's entry comes from Marvin Wallace Sr. And he says, oh, this is a good one. Hello, hello, DK and Hey Moan. And he does it with gusto and many, many all caps and exclamation points. I wanted to ask you guys about would you take 
a few losing seasons for a few more Super Bowl wins. Why does it feel like we as Steelers fans Mm -hmm. settle for just trying to make the playoffs instead of going and winning the Super Bowl? Feels like the standard is lower when it was to be a Super Bowl or bust, and now it feels like playoffs are bust. And you know, Moan, you just mentioned in the previous segment, it's almost like Marvin was listening. Yeah. That the Steelers went six and ten leading into what? Getting Draft. Ben and a Super Getting Bowl. Ben and the mm-hmm. Super Bowl. And it's yep. funny how that works because you hate to say this, but sports, because of the draft, yeah. do reward teams that finish very low. The most recent and glaring example of that, of course, being the Bengals and getting Joe Burrow and then showing up in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, man, would that, you that's trade it? That's what Marvin's question. asking. Would you trade yeah, would it? You, would you trade it? Goodness. Because in the top 10, you're getting supposedly ready-made guys. Minka Fitzpatrick is a ready-made guy, right? Like, that's what we expect. I think that's why the pressure on Devin Bush is so high, too, because yes. being the top 10, you're ready-made. Ben. It was clear he was a ready-made guy. Troy, what was he, 11? I guess 10 or 11? No, 14. They they moved up to get him. Okay, but you move up to go get guys like that when you're close enough, man. Would I I trade it out? As a Steeler fan, man, it's hard to see us losing. I'll say that. It's so hard to see a losing. You got to look at the ways that you would lose too. Like, would it it be embarrassing? And, and of course, it would be embarrassing. Um, But that's that's a hard sell. But in the business of football, DK, as you just broke it down, it, it, it's it's you even out. If you win high, you you pick low or you pick thirty two. But if you if you suck, then you pick top ten. And I I don't know if pride would allow those coaches in that room to kind of no tank. Chance. There's tank no for chance. a guy. There's no chance. That's that, a this hard. Is, this is, okay. So this, 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 is this discussion always, I, I always <laughs> condense it down to what you just said which is that there's nothing, nothing in the Tomlin character, or for that matter, you know, Art Rooney and all the time he was there, Kevin Colbert. You've heard it constantly. We've had it preached to us by them constantly. It's the Super Bowl. The goal is the Super Bowl. That actually emanates more from Colbert and did over the years than anyone else. He was the one who said, the way we're constructing this roster is not to get better. It's not to do this or to do that down the road. It's to try, what what can we do to build this roster to win the Super Bowl this year? By the way, I have to correct myself. I said Troy was a 14. Troy was a 16. 15 teams passed on Troy. 15 teams saw Troy and said, no thanks. (laughs) So... To that Sorry, I just had to no, no, no. That's that's perfect. I call them suckers, DK, because they got a HOF behind Troy. Okay, <laughs> uh, but but with with this though, DK, you you have to say, okay, we've seen suck for luck, then Garner a Super Bowl. We've seen tank for two. Suck for luck. <laughs> you remember that? About- and tank for two. Of tank both. for yeah. two was was another. One. I don't know if Joe Burrow had one, but it was evident that they were trying to get Joe Burrow after they realized what type of season he was having. Now he made it to the, the Super Bowl and lost, kind of the same way you did with Ben. Uh, but it, it's tough. And nowadays it seems like teams are honestly being built through free agency more than the actual draft. To DK, you have Matthew Stafford go from Detroit to LA and put himself in a position. You got a guy like Stefan Diggs that was traded to Buffalo Bills and made them a better team. You got Devontae Adams that also was traded, or was he traded a free agency to uh, to, to, to the Las Vegas Raiders? Like Those traded. are the moves that are being made right now, not necessarily the draft. And if we were going after anybody in the draft, quarterbacks are always going to play high. This year's crop's supposed to be really good. But you just went and got a number 20 guy. Okay? You just went and got Kenny Pickett. So are you trying to go have a bad season and go get a top 10 pick at quarterback? You know, and even still, we're looking at let's let's look at Justin Herbert. You know, that was a bad team, and they feel like they got a franchise quarterback. They hadn't even sniffed the playoffs yet. So it could work. You can try to go find the guy. But if you don't have DK a good core already, then what are you actually doing as a team to suck yeah. for a quarterback? Uh, yeah, or a I, I don't think you're going to see it. But I also don't think, and, and I think this is a this is a 
a, an important contextual we're thing doing a whole up. bunch of hair scratching discussing this too. yeah i know but in this case here's something that i want to remind everybody of all those free agents that the steelers brought in yeah. and we had talked about this earlier this summer but it matters to this point all those free agents are all really young yeah, okay. They are. Like James Daniels shows up here, and we think, oh, because we heard about him in Chicago and everything. He's twenty four years old, uh-huh. and and there's a bunch of these guys that are all in kind of that age bracket. Yeah. That just because they've been around the NFL for a while doesn't mean they're old. If there's one thing that we should have learned in Pittsburgh from Juju's time, it's that they're arriving younger than ever. Juju yes, showed up are. here barely twenty. Okay, mm-hmm. going on like 10, but that's another yeah. dialogue entirely. Okay, the, the sport is getting younger and the Steelers yeah. are getting so they can build with this and, group. They don't need so, to rebuild. To to your point real quick too, DK, is, is this, man. You're saying you can build those guys. And Ben was known as a playmaker at quarterback too, right? And a lot of people, are, the next conversation, if those young guys that you speak of kind of thrust up to be players, are you good with Kenny Pickett? Because he's a quarterback of the future. Just being a game manager. See, isn't that, though, what we're talking about when we talk about tanking anyway? Every guy that you mentioned there was quarterback, 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 okay? Yeah. Yeah. Well, look at look at this. Mitch Trubisky was a number two overall pick. Yep. Okay. Kenny Pickett was a first rounder. You've yep. got you've got those guys already. You don't need to tank. I'm not saying that they're Joe Burrow or whatever. Right. You don't have to tank to get quarterbacks. They've now got two of them. They they do, and we got to have that conversation when it's decided on what their career going to be. Is the team strong enough to, if they're not being, meaning playmakers, winners, do we have ourselves a damn good game manager, DK? No, you just went Trent Dilfer on them. Oh, no, you did. Let's be real. (laughs) You Dilfer them. I'm not not saying he's going to be, but if he is, how good of one can he be considering those young guys that should grow up in this in this inside that organization? I think you need a real live quarterback that's higher than game manager. Uh, to, to win it all. I mean, I know Dilford did what he did, Blacko. you know, uh, but yeah, yeah. I'm just spitballing here, DK. Yeah, I hear you. Let's do this again. I don't want that again. world. I don't want that world either, but being Let's, special. I hear that. I hear it. Let's do it again tomorrow, Moan. He was. He really was.